The job that now confronted the reconnaissance planners in the military department was to determine a means to monitor the dismantling of the IR and MRBM sites in Cuba and to verify the removal of the missile components from the island. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to moving equipment away from the MRBM launch sites, the Soviets methodically destroyed the fixed facilities in the vicinity of the firing position. This is San Cristobal site number two. A few days earlier, this was a concrete launch pad. This area also was a concrete launch pad. Soviet bulldozers have churned back and forth, disrupting the earth and leaving only chunks of concrete remaining. Soviet bulldozers at this location have churned back and forth and broken up these sites so that all that remain are chunks of concrete. In addition to removing equipment from the site areas and in addition to destroying the fixed facilities in the vicinity of the launching positions, the Soviets carefully cleared all the remaining operational equipment and debris from their site locations. The job again confronting the reconnaissance planners during this particular phase was to ensure that the missile equipment, the missile components that were being removed from the launch site areas was being taken to ports and removed from the island of Cuba and not simply being redeployed at some other location or hidden at some other location. High altitude aircraft swept the island and all the naval uh, facilities were, and seaports were carefully checked. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States did not just ensure that the missile alone left the island of Cuba. We ensured that the missile system left the island of Cuba. All components of that system were carefully counted as they left the site area, as they reached the port motor pools, and as they were loaded on Soviet ships. Here is one of the parking areas near the port of Mariel, one of the pier areas. Here we observe and carefully count with our low altitude photography the Soviet oxidizer trailers from the MRBM sites, the Soviet fueling trailers from the MRBM sites. Other fueling and oxidizer trailers are shown at these locations. The specially configured IRBM fueling trailer noted at Guanahai number one. They're also counted and tabulated as they move into the area prior to shipment away from the island. Missiles, including four MRBMs under canvas cover and under, on a transporter, are noted in the upper left corner of the photograph. A few days later, we checked the port of Casilda on 6 November. The missile, MRBM missiles on transporters have been moved southward from that temporary storage area, and six of them have been placed on the Soviet ship Kerchatov. Here are the six missiles under canvas cover and deck loaded on this particular ship. The ship is nearing the completion of its loading cycle. Forward hatch covers are closed. Rear hatches are being closed. And here, Soviet crewmen and technicians await in line or go up the gang uh, plank or gangway here in loading the uh, ship itself. Note the ship is under steam and about to move away. We will observe this ship leave this harbor area in a few hours. This shadow is cast by a RF-101 reconnaissance aircraft as it moves in over its target area at 600 feet. The next day, the Kerchatov leaves and another ship moves in, the Komsomol. Here again, we had this type of photography to see what the Soviets were loading on their ships and to ensure that indeed the missile systems were leaving the island. We can carefully monitor the erectors being pulled down from Sagua La Grande count them and see them loaded on Soviet ships, one of which is deck loaded at this location. We can actually see into the holes of these Soviet ships and can see the equipment, which includes fueling trailers already placed there by large cranes. When these ships reached the area of the quarantine, United States surface craft and aircraft affect inspection. As the United States destroyer 878 pulls alongside the Soviet ship Volgalis off Cuba, the Soviet crewmen tear back the tarpaulin cover, exposing the Soviet MRBM on transporter beneath. A helicopter stands off the Soviet ship Brotsk, and here the tarpaulin cover has been pulled back, exposing 
the Soviet MRVM ballistic booster minus nose cone. It measures 60 feet in length and is tightly wrapped in an all-weather protective covering. The Soviets removed their 42 missiles from Cuba on these eight ships. In these numbers, from these ports, on these dates, 5 through 9 November.